let me let me go ahead now and introduce our speaker for today. Uh, it's uh, with great uh, honor and pleasure that I want to welcome Marlon Fixico to join us today. Uh, Marlon is a Native American historian of Cheyenne and Seminole descent. Uh, he lived in Washington, D.C. for 30 years, uh, where he was one of the founders of the Two-Spirit so uh, Society of Washington, D.C. Uh, he survived the AIDS epidemic uh, time during uh, in D.C. Uh, he's an active leader who has witnessed the resurgence and growth of the Two-Spirit movement. Uh, presently, he's retired and living in Idaho. Uh, Marlon serves two organizations, the International Council of Two-Spirit Societies and the Southwest Indigenous Women's Coalition LGBTQ Two-Spirit Advisory Board. Uh, so I uh, welcome Marlon and welcome all of you to join as Marlon shares his stories and insights into Two-Spirit identity. Uh, followed by then an opportunity for discussion and questions. So Marlon, uh, take it away. Thanks, Morgan. So today uh, there's a video and hopefully it'll work. We're gonna try it. Uh, that talks about the term Two-Spirit. It's um, over the years, the term originated in uh, 1980, 89 or 90, I forget. Uh, but um, since then, <laughs> I've read many different definitions and uh, people have come to a place where they have their own meaning about, so you have to ask people, but there is an original intent behind it. And this video captures it very well. I was very pleased to see it. So Morgan, can you see if you can okay. hit the hit So the we're going to try this now. I'm going to share my screen and then I'm going to show the video. That's that's the way we think this is going to work. Morgan, you also have to share the sound when you share the screen. There's okay. a little thing you click. Yeah, that's we were having issues with the sound earlier when, when Marlon was trying to share it. So that's why I'm sharing it. So let's see. Um, that's a separate share. Let's see if you let's see if you can hear it. Though the label has only can you all hear that? I can hear. You can hear that. it. Mm -hmm. okay. I can hear, but not see. What's that? We can't see it. You can't see it? No, I can't see it. Have you clicked share screen at yeah, the bottom right? Oh, share. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Morgan. Though the label has only been there used you go. since the nineties, that, that's good. Is mm -hmm. something indigenous groups have identified with for centuries. But what does two spirit actually mean, and where does it come from? So, what is two spirit? It's an umbrella term that bridges indigenous and Western understandings of gender and sexuality. You may recognize it as the two that sometimes appears on the end of LGBTQ2. There are many definitions and understandings of two-spirit, and each is nation-specific. The term was intentionally introduced by Native people with the goal of finding common ground and helping educate about traditional teachings in a contemporary context. The Two-Spirit Society of Denver offers the following definition. Two-spirit refers to another gender role believed to be common among most, if not all, First Peoples of Turtle Island, North America, one that had a proper and accepted place within Native societies. This acceptance was rooted in the spiritual teachings that say all life is sacred. So how did the term Two-Spirit first come about? In 1990, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, at the third annual Native American Gay and Lesbian Gathering, the term Two-Spirit was proposed and affirmed by consensus. The word was a potential solution to what Native scholars and activists called the problem of naming or making the many different sexual and gender identities that fall under the Two-Spirit umbrella legible across Native and non-Native cultures alike. For example, to illustrate the diversity of meanings that Two-Spirit contains, consider the following. In Lakota, the word winkte means to be as a woman and refers to two-souled Lakota people 
would transgress boundaries of gender from what may be considered male to female. In Diné, Nadleje means those who transform and refers to one of four separate genders, masculine, feminine, masculine, masculine, feminine, masculine, and feminine, feminine. Each gender has its own word in the Diné language. And those are just two nation specific examples. There are so many more. Each nation's understanding of gender and sexual diversity is different and grounded in specific spiritual beliefs. Although all nations don't have a concept of two-spirit people, across those indigenous nations that do, two-spirit people were historically held in high regard and often considered sacred or divine, holding important positions like matchmakers, medicine people, or warriors on the front lines of battle. Many two-spirit people perform roles traditionally assigned to both men and women. Wigwa, a famous two-spirit of the Zuni or Ihamana, was known to take part in masculine tribal matters and feminine tribal matters and was even sent as an official Zuni delegate to Washington, D.C. Part of the reason two-spirit was adopted at the 1990 conference was Verizon 5G is here with a coverage of 5G uh -oh. we lost it's it's the ads. more and more cities Oh, the ad. It is ends. <laughs> Sorry. This is 5G America's been waiting for, only from Verizon. Because much of the written record on the indigenous nations of North America begins with European contact. For instance, the writings of Jesuit priests from the 1600s contain references to Bertichets, which means kept boy in French, to refer to those who embodied both male and female genders. These writings often focus negatively on perceived cross-dressing among the Anishinaabe. The term is not only inaccurate in that it projects a European understanding of gender, but is widely considered pejorative by natives. Two-spirit was an attempt at self-determination across linguistic barriers, because the existing language, foreign and imposed violently on the indigenous peoples of North America, was both offensive and deeply colonial. European colonizers imposed homophobia, rigid binary gender roles, and misogyny under the guise of civilizing indigenous people through the Christian tradition in residential schools and beyond. As a result, indigenous people were robbed not only of their land, but of their spiritual traditions and way of life regarding two-spirit people. Many nations came to forbid and punish two-spirit unions and self-expression. As recently as 2004, Kathy Reynolds and Don McKinley, two Cherokee women in Tulsa, Oklahoma, attempted to marry under tribal law, setting off a convoluted legal battle with serious political and social implications. The two were thrust into the spotlight against their wishes and became instant public symbols of the battle for two-spirit rights under tribal law. The Cherokee tribe is the second largest in the U.S. Although they were granted the right to marry, the decision to issue them a marriage license was soon challenged and led to a tribal law declaring that a union was to be between a man and a woman. Eventually, in 2016, the law was overturned. By that time, a wider cultural shift had taken place, both outside of and within the Cherokee Nation. In recent years, many Native people are returning to their two spiritual as a way to heal from the injustices the American colonial project has visited upon their ancestors and traditions. In 2011, the first known U.S. Two-Spirit powwow was organized by the Bay Area American Indian Two-Spirits. Since then, powwows honoring Two-Spirits have been held in Montana and Kansas. And in March of 2017, the largest powwow in the U.S., the Gathering of Nations, honored Two-Spirit people during its grand entry. Two-Spirit identity is resilient and precious. It has survived centuries of colonial violence and prejudice. These sacred ways of knowing live on amongst Native youth seeking to know more about themselves, elders who have kept the traditions alive in spite of the odds, and anyone in between. It should go without saying, but Two-Spirit is not a poetic way for non-Native LGBTQ people to express themselves. We're looking at you, Jason Boaz. It is, however, <laughs> a sacred tradition among the first peoples of this land we call Turtle Island that all of its inhabitants should know about and respect. I think that's it. Okay. Let's see. So, uh, the, the link is available for if you want to watch it again or use it for a reference. Uh, um, so, um, 
I wanted to use that as an introduction to the term two spirit. It's really good. Uh, he goes into explain a lot of the details about how it came to be and how we use it now. Uh, I wanted to introduce uh, one of the hist original historians. I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully it'll work. <clears throat> All right, is it working? Can you see it? It should say Will Roscoe. Uh, he, uh, Will has a, a website. He's a historian. He's written a lot of books on different subjects, but uh, Two Spirits are one of the topics that he talks about. Uh, on his page, he's got his books. Uh, a couple of them that stand out are the uh, we were the Zuni woman, we were the, which uh, Gio talked about in the video, and also there's a book called Changing Ones. Uh, there's one down called uh, Living a Spirit in the Flesh, and uh, it's it's a collection of essays and poems written in the I think 70s and 80s of two-spirit people who were living at the time. Uh, <clears throat> some of them are still alive, but it was from that period. The reason I wanted to show this is those books, but also because uh, Will's got a slideshow that's pretty brief and covers uh, some information that I, that I wanted to go over, the uh, historical part of uh, two spirits. There, uh, the original word the anthropologists had used was verdash, and uh, we hated it, <laughs> basically. So we were thinking of some other term. Um, there's so many different words for what we call two spirit today. Uh, in my language, Cheyenne, the word is hemani. Uh, and there's a list of the ones that exist and there's like 155 different tribes and they all have a name for their two-spirit people. Uh, so uh, it was difficult. How, you know, what do we call ourselves? Uh, let's see. Oh, when, when uh, the explo first explorers came they thought that uh, two-spirit people were an abomination. This picture depicts an event where they fed a bunch of them to dogs uh, in the very beginning. That was uh, like the conquistadors uh, that followed Columbus. Um, <clears throat> This is a Cheyenne picture of uh, uh, Hemani people, the two-spirit people uh, leading a, a very sacred ceremony. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Navajo Nadle named Hustin Claw, who was um, a master weaver and he led ceremonies he was an important uh, leader in the Navajo tribe. And this is Wewa again. Wewa was actually uh, welcomed in, into Washington uh, by the social elite. And she was sort of uh, shown around for a couple of months. And nobody realized that uh, she was uh, a transgender. Uh, when they found out that she was actually physically a man, uh, they were embarrassed. <laughs> and, and they sent her back to uh, New Mexico, where she was from. There's Hostin Claw again. This one is Oshtish. He was a crow. Uh, they were called Bode. They, uh, she was uh, ostracized by uh, the missionaries who came and said that she 
couldn't exist. The tribe rebelled against that, but uh, she went and lived in exile. She took in a bunch of other uh, Bodhi people and, and took care of them for the rest of her life. She was a master artisan in uh she created a lot of different uh, Indian, what we call Indian crafts today, but she was very uh, skilled. Uh, this one is a picture of a, <clears throat> um, a woman, I forget the tribe she is, I can't read it, but her name was, oh, Kalispell. She uh, was a warrior and uh, she's very uh, renowned she had several wives. This picture is a picture of Geronimo's crew. And right there in the background, you can't barely see is, uh, there was a woman, her name was Lojan. Lojan was known to be a medicine person who could see where the enemy were uh, from a distance. And she enabled Geronimo to evade the U.S. Army for a very, very long time. Uh, eventually, they got tired of running and they gave, but she was uh, very skilled at what she did. She was an important part of the tribe. And these are the books again. Um, <clears throat> so that's the historical uh, part of the two spirits that have existed in the past. I wanted to jump to the uh, present. Uh, where did I go here? Here we go. So um, in 1975, I was graduating from high school actually. And that was the year that gay American Indians first organized. Uh, it was the first uh, organization of gay natives in modern history. They were founded in San Francisco. Uh, this guy you can barely see back here, his name is Randy Burns. And there was a, a woman named Barbara Cameron who was a very active uh, activist uh, at the time. Uh, she's now passed away, but <clears throat> there were uh, five of them. They were basically students at San Francisco University, and uh, they. This was 1975, so it was uh, about. It was after Stonewall, of course, um, and there was a lot of activism in back in those days when, uh, among young people. Uh, especially college students. And so uh, they formed their first gay uh, Native American group. They call themselves Gay American Indians, uh, G-A-I. Um, it was a play on the word gay, of course. Uh, but they were the first. Not after them, there was a, the second group was uh, Minnesota. Minnesota uh, was founded not too long after them. On the first march in Washington, they were there. Uh, uh, GAI and Minneapolis came together uh, and <clears throat> marched in the first wa uh, march in Washington, 1979. Uh, I put this up. A uh, picture of Time Magazine that came out on September 4th, 1983. Uh, I mean, July of 83. I moved to Washington, D.C. right after that. Uh, I was married at the time. I was going through a divorce. And uh, I was very uh, um, ashamed and heartbroken. I thought I was gonna die because I was gay. So I decided to forget everything. And I moved into a group house with five other 20 something year old gay Native American men who were all from all over the United States. Uh, at the time they were called yuppies. 
uh, young urban professionals, as people might remember that term. But we were all living in Washington, D.C. in a group house. We all had jobs and uh, we were crazy. Uh, there are two of us left out of the six that lived in that house. Uh, four of them died of AIDS. Uh, <clears throat> And one of them died from diabetes. Me and uh, Miguel are the only ones left. Miguel lives in Florida. But it was an amazing time. Alcohol was rampant. And that's where people met. Uh, there's a lot of things I could say about that time, but it was... It was uh, hard because people were dying all around us and we all expected to die. I did. I had no uh, reason to live actually. Uh, so anyway, uh, it was wild and I survived. These are two of the guys who lived in the house, uh, Monty and Kevin. They were both uh, ex-boyfriends of mine uh, at one point, but we remained friends over the years. They both died of AIDS. Um, I was there to witness everything. It was horrible. Uh, <clears throat> back to the history. So the second Mark Washington, GAI was there. So we might notice in 1987, there was the March. And right after that, 1988 was the first two-spirit gathering. Of course, we didn't have the word two-spirit yet. And then this is an actual flyer from the first gathering. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, it was called, they called it bas the basket and the bow. <laughs> that was a reference to a Paiute ceremony where uh, when a child was of a certain age, uh, toddler size, they would put them in a circle and put a basket and a bow in the, on each side of the circle. Whichever one the child crawled to and picked up, that was decide their journey in life. Uh, and so it was celebrated by the, by the tribe. Um, so it was, considered early on what uh, it's hard to explain in English about gender, but you guys, I think you guys can grasp what I'm trying to say is that if gender was a choice, not, um, I don't know, it's, it's like, it, it wasn't forced on us. <laughs> we got to choose what we, wanted to do, what we wanted to be, and it was celebrated. Um, just as uh, last year, uh, there was a, a young boy who was seven years old, and he, the dance that uh, women do, it's called a jingle dress dance, and it's a, it's a woman's dance. And this little boy, was watching videos on uh, the internet and he told his mom that he wanted to dance a jingle dress and she made him a jingle dress. There's a video of him on the internet dancing and at the powwow and people celebrate him for being who he is. Uh, sorry. Mar Marlon, I, Marlon, we, we have a question. Go ahead. Uh, does, okay. your, does your language or do native languages have gendered pronouns? Yes, they're not. Um, it's, it's, when it comes to um, referencing what we call two spirit, uh, the 
there are different tribes that do ha handle it differently. So it's not uh, across the board the same, but there they do. It's like uh, Hamani. There's a word that means uh, a male who uh, who lives as a woman, and then there's another word for a woman who lives as a man. Uh, uh, actually, they're called the reference is backwards people. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, and like the, uh, the video said, the Navajo genders. Uh, some of them only have one that references both male and females, but the so it's different. But they all do have a reference a gender like uh, a third gender. It's like there's male, female, and a third gender, which uh, is actually to me is an umbrella term, which could be, you know, masculine woman or a feminine man. Uh, but it just depends on the tribe. I don't know if that answers your question, but there was different, definitely pronouns that referenced who you were that was that was distinct that made sure you, when you use that pronoun, you knew who you were talking about. Uh, and it wasn't male or female. It was something in between. So uh, that's, I don't know, hopefully that answers your question. <clears throat> so um, where was I? So then after the uh, first gathering, there was a couple of more Then the, the term Two-Spirit came along. Uh, in New York City in 1990, they, there was a their group there, the Two-Spirit group was called themselves Wiwa Barchiampi. Those are two uh, um, Two-Spirit people who lived in the past and uh, the New York group held the first HIV Two Spirits Health Conference and they brought people from all of the United States. I was there, I got to go. And uh, it was scheduled in conjunction with the New York Gay Pride. Uh, and we marched and we walked in the march. Uh, they, don't, they don't call them parades in New York City, they call them marches because uh, of the political uh, part of it. They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they still consider it uh, a protest. So um, we, we walked in the march in 1990. So last year, uh, this is 2019, it's supposed to be 2018. I, I, Miss, I took that's a uh, typo. Last year in the, at the World Pride uh, 50th anniversary of Stonewall, uh, we had another HIV conference, a Two Spirits conference, and we marched again in that parade. Uh, there were 150 of us in that group. Uh, this is the this woman right here, she was in the first one. That's her right there. Uh, <laughs> how many years ago I, keep, I forgot the count but this is Barbara and then this is Barbara again so uh, and I was in the first one I don't have a picture of me but I was in the first one and I was in this one too so uh, we have some continuity uh, at this point in time we have I, I keep track of them. Uh, we have 40, 48, 48 two spirit groups across the United States and Canada. Uh, that started from that first group in San Francisco in 1975. I mean, it's amazing. It really, 
it takes my breath away to think about all the people who are organizing and recognizing our two-spirit people. You know, one of the reasons we do this is because we have the highest suicide rates uh, of all races. And it kills me to think about that. Um, the, uh, honestly, the white males have a slightly higher rate than we do. But the numbers, the sheer numbers are, are bigger, of course, because there's a bigger population. But because we have a small population per capita, the ones that are killing themselves, it, it breaks my heart. I can't, I can barely speak when I talk about it. But when I see all these groups being formed across Turtle Island, it really gives me hope. Uh, cause I know we're all working towards the same thing of recognizing and bringing back traditions of respect and honor for all people, not just two spirit people, but for all people and, and especially two spirit people. Uh, I wanted to include a couple of things the, the Navajos, uh, have started their own, uh, pride celebration. It's not just a march, it's not just a uh, gathering, it's a whole weekend of workshops and uh, events. Uh, they have a big uh, <laughs> drag show, it's pretty amazing. Uh, but they do a lot of great things. Uh, they call The Navajo call themselves Diné, so it's called Diné Pride. Uh, and this is the latest poster from the annual San Francisco. The Bay stands for Bay Area American Indian Two Spirits. And they have a powwow that started in 2011. Uh, and it just gets bigger and bigger every year. Uh, they started it. Now there's three of them. There's uh, Two in um, in Canada, two spirit powwows, and uh, Phoenix uh, just had one this past year that for the first time. Uh, we're growing, we're getting bigger, and people are accepting it. Our tribes are accepting us. Uh, one of the interesting ironies of uh, uh, <laughs> gay marriage that the United States, uh, when, he, when the Supreme Court uh, affirmed that uh, gay marriage was legal in the United States, uh, the tri Indian tribes, because of our sovereignty, it wasn't automatic. And several tribes actually passed laws to outlaw uh, same-sex marriage. So it's been an uphill battle. The colonization and Christianity is so entrenched in our people that they've forgotten our own traditions. And some of us have to keep working at trying to uh, change those laws. There are at least, uh, there's had, uh, there's like 500 and something tribes, 540, I can forget the number, but there's over 500 tribes recognized by the federal government in the United States. And of those, there are about 40 something that either uh, they allow same-sex marriage uh, passively, it's like, they're not enforcing any kind of laws against them. So it's kind of like accepted, but uh, there's only about 20 of them that actually have 
laws in place to um, accept same-sex marriage. Uh, and this last year, uh, some friends of mine worked really hard with the Oglala tri uh, Lakota tribe in, in Pine Ridge, uh, South Dakota. And they are the first tribe to actually pass uh, hate crimes laws for uh, hurting two-spirit people. Uh, they've had a lot of trouble in that area, and so it was important. But it's uh, heartening to see a tribal council actually tackle the issue. Uh, of course, there was controversy, and uh, but the majority of the tribe voted to approve those laws. So those are in place. And other tribes are looking at it and uh, following suit where we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> we come a long way. We have so much to be thankful for and grateful for. I, you know, each, uh, each year I, I, I do, I keep track of, um, I have a, a tracker. Google has this thing where you, if you want to, uh, if you put up a word in your email, it, it'll pop up anything that anything that shows up with that word. So I put in two spirit. So any kind of news article that pops up will show up in my email, and uh, that's how I find these two these new two spirit groups. I do the same thing in Facebook. I'll put two spirit and find uh, new new groups popping up all the time. And I contact them. I talk to whoever's organizing it, and I try to encourage them and, and just make con connection. And I meet the most amazing young people. There's so many young people who are uh, working hard to find a voice uh, and gain acceptance. There is a young uh, transgender female who uh, whose family is a big powwow. Uh, uh, they participate in powwows all the time. And so she grew up uh, as a male, but then she got to be a teenager and she wanted to dress as a female. And now she's a champion female dancer. Um, and she goes around and she uh, just graduated high school but she's a speaker. She gets asked to speak at different events. Um, and she's so well-spoken. I just, I, it just overwhelms me to see all this uh, young people coming up and two-spirit people being accepted. Because um, we're not always accepted everywhere. We're, we're not. Uh, we still have resistance within our own people, which is sad uh, and ironic to me. Um, Marlon, there's... There, there's a question, if okay. I could. And I think yeah. you've, you've been speaking to it already, but I just wanted to, um, how are third gender people treated then in 1988 and now in Native American tribes? Uh, Again, it's like uh, not across the board. It's not. It's not the same. I mean, you're talking about, like I said, 500 different tribes, and some of them are large and some of them are small. Some of them are deeply entrenched in Christianity, and some of them have a lot of elders who still remember traditions. So it just depends on where you go. You can't say that all the Indians are the same, uh, but there are uh, many, many places where uh, we're more accepted and we're making more and more accepted uh, every year. I think uh, the people who are resistant, especially uh, Christian people uh, are coming around slowly uh, to see that this is 
who we've always been traditionally, people who love our children, uh, no matter if they're two spirit or not, that they were always accepted. That to not accept that is not it's not our way. Uh, so they have to struggle between uh, whatever their concept of God is. And uh, believe me, uh, I was the same way for a long time. I was raised, uh, my father was an alcoholic and, until I was 12. And then he became a Christian. So that was a trip. But before he became a Christian, um, I used to go to church as a little boy. You know, it was like just to escape. We grew. I grew up in Oklahoma City, and there was uh, these churches that would come around our neighborhood. I lived. We lived in a poor neighborhood, so they would come around like on a Thursday or Friday and give us these flyers about come to, to their church on Sunday. And I would look at the flyers and see one of them had a. a uh, when you roast, one of them maybe have a, a hayride. One of them would have some kind of carnival thing. They were always trying to entice us to come to their church. And I would pick the one that I thought would be the funnest and take my brothers and sisters. I had a brother and sister and I would make them come along with me and we would go. So I went to all these churches, different denominations growing up. Uh, I would just jump on whatever bus that was coming and I thought was had the best uh, had the best deal. Uh, but in the process, I learned a lot about uh, the Bible and the Bible stories. And it was always a, a, a safe haven from the alcoholic home that I was living in. You know, it was horrible. The thing I don't, you know, won't go into details, but it wasn't wasn't very nice. So it was nice to get away for a little while. Uh, but the other thing about my life was that I spent the summers with my Cheyenne grandmother until my father became a Christian. And then when he became a Christian, I he wouldn't let me go stay with her anymore because he said she was a pagan. And she was going to go to hell, which I knew was wrong. <laughs> so, uh, you're crazy. She's the most spiritual person I know. And um, she she died when I was 18. She got to go to my high school graduation. She died about a month after I graduated from high school. It was hard. Uh, I became an alcoholic myself. I drank for uh, about 18 years. I got sober when I was 37. I'm 63 now. I've been sober going on 26 years. Yay. Um, when I got sober, I heard the things that they were talking about at the AA meetings, and I realized that these are the same things that my grandmother used to say. The spiritual things, things. Uh, I remember the first time I went to Sunday school, I was, I don't know how old I was, I was small. And they were talking about God. And so I asked grandma, I came home from a Sunday school. And I said, grandma, they were talking about God. What is God? And I can still see her face to this day. She's looked at me and she said, the Cheyennes we call, what we call God is called Mahil. Mahil means I don't know. She said, because it means we don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. it's everything. She put her hands together like this and she opened up her hands. And after that, I just, it was stuck in my mind. It's like, this is what God is. So when they were talking about God at church, I didn't think of a, a man up in the clouds. I just thought it was everything um, in a, my young mind. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a couple more questions when you're ready. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, one is, what is the name of the young two-spirit dancer who you reference? Because uh, Kim would love to see her dance. <laughs> um, that was. And uh, another comment and question is, I have a transgendered son and always feel fearful for violence brought upon him no matter where he is. How do I calm myself down and not feel stricken or sick? By my worries <clears throat> well the one first of all the uh, the two-spirit dancer uh i'll have to look it up but if you um contact me uh, uh directly i can uh get that to you or i can just put it uh i can give it to morgan and make sure everybody gets it if they want to see that uh video uh, and with regard to your transgender son, uh, <clears throat> I don't think you can get a getaway from worrying about him. Uh, our world is not conducive. But I would say that look for support from the transgender community. Uh, <laughs> you will find safety there. You'll find support, uh, acceptance. I mean, it, I think one of our fears uh, as parents, I'm, I'm a parent, I have four children. Uh, they're all grown now, of course, and I have grandkids now. Uh, I have five grandkids. Uh, one of them still has a question about whether what she is at this point she's a female but she's not sure what her gender is she sometimes she feels like a male sometimes she feels like a female um and i have my 11 year old granddaughter who announced that she's a lesbian uh she's got a crush on a girl at school uh i feel very proud that they're uh, they're open and talking about it I mean, I would have never done that, but uh, you have a right to be concerned about their safety. Uh, I wouldn't say stop worrying, but I would say uh, balance it with uh, hope. Balance it with the faith that there are good people out there who do accept transgender. There are, there's a whole world, a community of people who love transgender people. When I first went to my first gathering, I was uh, 19, uh, 2000, 2002. Uh, the gatherings had been going since the 80, 1988. And I didn't go until 2002 because drinking was more important to me. <laughs> than taking part in the two spirit stuff. Uh, my lover at the time, Kevin, the one who died, he was very active. Uh, and uh, so I would hear about everything that was going on through him. Uh, he was uh, He was an activist and he did a lot of work. Uh, whereas I was more of a, I wasn't very interested. I was more worried about getting laid and getting drunk. But anyway, the uh, the point being <coughs> that, uh, oh, I lost my track now. <laughs> That's what happens when you get old. Uh <clears throat> Mar Marlon, we have another question. Okay, go ahead. Um, so what is the mission of the two spirit groups that you're belonging to? What, what, what is their goal to? Sorry. Their actual goal is to affect the, the uh, suicide rate, uh, really. But there's all, I, there's all kinds of things that, uh, there's a training that we started uh, we work with uh, police departments and tribal communities uh, to do, uh, I guess, basically, it's sensitivity training, talking about how to how to 
ask questions of Two Spirit people, how to how to talk to them, uh, what's going on with them. Um, because a lot of people uh, still, you know, they're, they don't know what to say. It's, I mean, so it, we do training for that. We, uh, we organize what we call the Two-Spirit Gatherings. Uh, this year, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic, but we had a virtual online gathering, uh, which went off pretty well. Uh, but we usually get together... The gathering is um, that we, it goes from place to place. It's not any one place particular every year. Uh, it's been in California, Montana, Canada, New York. Uh, it's always held uh, outside at a camping facility away from the cities. Uh, and no alcohol or drugs are allowed. Uh, those are the two criteria for having a gathering. And those are set in stone at the very first gathering. Uh, it's interesting, the very first gathering, the one that Basket and Bo that I was talking about, uh, they didn't have a place to meet, so they met at a gay bar in, in Minneapolis called Gay 90s. Uh, but... Uh, after that, we never met in the cities anymore. Uh, not because it was just too tempting. And the alcohol is such a big issue for Native Americans, especially for uh, the gay community at that point. So uh, it's been an important part of our uh, ongoing journeys uh, to promote sobriety. Uh, Alcoholism is not a traditional <laughs> value, definitely. Even though so, um, so we, we I want to be mindful of people's time and be respectful of that. So uh, it's a little past three thirty now. So um, at this point, uh, oh wow, yeah, I, I know. To ask <laughs> time you, time but... flies. Right? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it, it's been very interesting. Um, so I guess uh, just if anybody has any last question, it would, well, first, was, was there anything else that you wanted to, to sort of get in before we take any last minute questions and kind of wrap things up? Uh, no, basically, uh, there's two spirit powwows, uh, there's two spirit gatherings, if you're interested. Uh, the only requirement is that you come with a, what we call a sponsor. So you don't break any protocols accidentally, uh, but you're welcome. So uh, if you need a sponsor, ask me and I'll, I'll help you out. Great. Okay, so I guess if anybody has any last minute questions uh, for Marlon, you can either uh, put something in a chat or you can uh, unmute yourself. Um, let's see. Uh, so we have a link uh, to the video. Um, yeah, I can. Um, um, well, um, the link actually, let's see. I can put it in the chat box. Yeah, put it in the chat box if you could. That'd be great. It might already still be in there from the beginning. Um, Yes, the, the, the video that we watched all yeah. together is in the, the top of the chat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, so we've so got the top that. of the chat is mm -hmm. there, yes, good. Mm -hmm. You guys, you should put it again at the bottom because sometimes people who come in late can't access the beginning oh, of the chat. Got it, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Whoops, that was the wrong thing. You came, <laughs> came in after that, that you didn't, you wouldn't see it. Yeah. Okay, I tried to put that in there, but I had a different copy and paste. <laughs> So. I put there's two there was two links one was to the website and one was directly to the actual video right okay there thank you go. Marlon thank you okay. you're welcome you're welcome so, okay so uh thank you so much Marlon uh thank you to all of you who are uh have been joining us for today um if there's nothing else, then uh, 
I think that concludes the program and I certainly appreciate everybody's participation today. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me. Bye. Let's see. Stop.